I spoke with Chiefs GM Brett Veach yesterday about the far more pressing business issue relating to Patrick Mahomes, not a fifth year option, but a long term contract. Here is my question, Veach's answer on the overall status of Mahomes' long term deal. Are you getting any agitation, any frustration, any sense from Mahomes' side that they want to do it now? No, no, not at all. But, you know, I'm certainly, we know that we would like to get something done um, sooner than later. And I certainly know that they feel the same way. Um, you know, you're, when you kind of go through the last few, few months here, I think we've all realized it's been a crazy time for the whole country. Um, so with uh, a crazy free agency period combined with um, a new, never been done before virtual draft, um, certainly in our early dialogue, dialogue with um you know pat and his uh, representatives we kind of knew that once things settled down um we'd be able to to open up dialogue and and, and proceed but i mean look we all want to get it done it'll take time like all these big deals do but um i guess the best thing to say mike is you know it, he'll be a kansas city chiefs for the duration of his career and we feel confident about that so look that's all that fans really care about is patrick mahomes going to be part of the team or not but the extent to which he's consuming salary cap space, Chris, is entirely relevant to what kind of help they can put around him. That's the balance. And there's no real deadline. That's why I asked the question about are they getting any pressure to do it now because they could sit on this for another year. They could run this all the way up to the franchise tag deadline after five seasons for Mahomes. This isn't like Chris Jones' situation, who has a clear deadline of July 15 with the franchise tag applied to him to get a long-term deal done or not for the duration of the 2020 season. There isn't that hard deadline. And I, I think that to the extent that the Chiefs can buy their time or bide their time, as the case may be, I think they should. If Mahomes isn't clamoring for a new deal, why push it? Why rush it? Why do it in this climate? Why not let the world settle down a little bit and then get Mahomes taken care of, Chris? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, Mike, I, I would think that's, you know, what, what both sides are actually thinking right now. I mean, as we've seen, Patrick Mahomes, he's a pretty realistic, humble superstar. And I, I think he's got a pretty good feel for the overall big picture as far as knowing what the world is going through right now and that there's a lot of uncertainty. He's probably not going to get his contract anytime soon, or at least not until we know and have a clearer plan of what COVID-19 does to the NFL football season. But nonetheless, I mean, if you're the Kansas City Chiefs, you don't want to let this linger too long. You know, this is Patrick Mahomes. This is rare. You know, this is really rare, Mike. And I, I, I was thinking about this last night when I kind of saw this on the rundown, just, you know, when have we ever had – the guy who's the best player in the league by his third year in the league, second year as a starter, like there's no arguments. Everybody would say Patrick Mahomes is the best player in football and not even at the start of his prime of his career. That's to me the interesting thing about this contract, just because, you know, you're going to have to plan. He's going to blow the current market out of the water because they got to plan for the fact that he's not even in his prime and three or four years from now, when he's still the best quarterback in football, it is going to look like he's underpaid to a degree. So there's going to have to be some planning there to make up for that. And I don't know if that goes to the salary cap percentage or whatever it is, but this certainly would be one of the first guys I would ever think about that would be worthy of taking a percentage instead of just a standard number. Well, two things here. First of all, Veach, and you can hear the entire interview and see the entire interview at the PFTPM podcast, youtube.com slash NBC sports. I've posted the video at profootballtalk.com. 20 minutes, a lot of interesting stuff from Brett Veach. But when I asked him about Mahomes at first, he led with he's the best player in the NFL. So, you know, usually when a GM or a coach says something like that about a player who has yet to sign a long-term contract, I cringe a little bit because you don't want to heap superlatives when you have to go to the bargaining table because it gets used against you. But in this case, there's no debate. There's no discussion. No. It would be disrespectful for Brett Veach to not call Patrick Mahomes the best player in the NFL. We all know it, and he found him. He insisted on the Chiefs getting him. So, if anything, it's a badge of honor 
for Brett Veach that Mahomes is the best player in football. Ask Mike, the Mike. Cap percentage, oh, though. Okay, sorry. I, I, I was just going to say, you, you know, just because of what I like, can you think of a player like this in, in your history or since you've been in the business to where you go, oh, he's clearly the best player? in the NFL, his second year as a starter and his third year in the league. That's to me, you know, maybe the, the I can only think of Dan Marino, really. That's that the, the only guy I, I thought, thought of. Right. Dan Marino, I mean, I a guy he's... who declared himself that early in his career as one of the best, if not the best quarterbacks in the NFL. It was a different time then though. Yeah, there wasn't true right. free agency. There wasn't a franchise tag. There wasn't that formula, that pathway to ensuring that a guy got his second contract. He was at the mercy of the team. He was never going to be a free agent. He was just going to have to take what the team gave him or not play at all. So this is different because here we are, two years as a starter. He already has the window open for a second contract. And the question is, when will they get it done? You mentioned salary cap percentage. And that's something I've been pushing for years now. Darrell Rivas tried to get it back in 2010 from the Jets. Kirk Cousins tried to get it. Others have tried. No one has gotten it. The teams don't want to do it. The league doesn't want them to do it for whatever reason. I think it makes sense because it protects the player against the ongoing spikes in the salary cap. And I think the team should embrace it because it gives them certainty as to how much of the salary cap is going to be devoted to that player. And you avoid a situation where the player wakes up one day, several years into his contract, and he's upset because in comparison to the market, he's underpaid because the, the cap keeps going up and up and up. But given where we are right now, Chris, given the, the possibility – slash likelihood that the NFL season will proceed if it proceeds at all without fans in the stands for most if not all of the games we are looking at for the first time ever a reduction in the salary cap from this year to next year and that has to be factored into this analysis and maybe maybe the teams all of a sudden are inclined to go cap right. percentage because if the cap goes down 25 30 percent one of the items on my list to find out is how much money the nfl is going to lose relative to the tv money if it doesn't have ticket sales i mean you know you can't have for example they're not gonna have minor league baseball this year because it's not like minor league baseball has a tv contract that can prop it up if you don't have people showing up for the games there's no money to be made for football the tv money is a huge piece of it bigger than how much they get at the box office but you know, that take that out of the equation and and your cap is going to go down. And that's got to be a factor. However you structure it for Patrick Mahomes, that's got to be a factor in what the Chiefs and Mahomes do because you don't want him to have, you know, a $25 million, $30 million cap number next year. If the cap gets cut in half and it's down to $100 million, or let's say it's 120 or 130 whatever the case may be, this is part of the equation for anyone sure. who's doing a contract now, but especially big contracts. Yeah, no, no, no doubt about it. I mean, yes, I mean, I think that's what, if you're Patrick Mahomes, I mean, I guess I pose the question to you. Yeah, would you even want to do a contract right now in this current environment? You're right. I mean, it's more beneficial maybe to the teams to get it done, and maybe they would want to do the, the, the percentage of the salary cap. But, yeah, if, if I'm a Patrick Mahomes superstar in this current environment right now, I'm not so sure, you know, I'm calling Kansas City Chiefs and asking for a new contract. Uh, you know, maybe because there is too many, too much uncertainty. And you want to see where this goes throughout this year. You know, Patrick Mahomes, you know, if you're Patrick Mahomes and I'm in his shoes, I don't want to sign a contract where I'm getting 40 and $42 million a year. And then to find out, like you're saying, in the 20, 2021 season, all of a sudden the salary cap is $140 million. And you're sitting there going, whoa, I'm taking up like, you know, one third of the sal you know, the salary cap or, you know, a little less than that. But Either way, I would be I would have some trepidation if I'm a player too because I wouldn't want to ruin the football team from that aspect next year because of my big new contract. And one of the things to remember about this too because Mahomes has said multiple times that he doesn't want to keep the Chiefs from having a competitive team around him. Every year you get those draft picks who come in at much lower salaries and that's where the obligation is on the Chiefs to hit on those picks to supplement the roster around Patrick Mahomes. But Mahomes hasn't said anything to suggest he is going to take that, hey, it's my job to get paid, it's your job to manage the salary cap approach that we've seen other players take, and there's nothing wrong with the player taking that. Chris, from my perspective, 
when you consider the risks they take, the sacrifices they make, the value they bring to the table, I believe that NFL players should always get every last penny. And when you have a special talent like Patrick Mahomes, who elevates the entire league, there's nothing wrong with saying, I always want to be the highest paid player in the NFL. Maybe that's the clause you put into his contract, that no matter what, his contract will always escalate to exceed the cap number of the highest paid player in the NFL if he doesn't already have that. I think he deserves that. I think you should want that. And this is where we circle back to what Brett Veach said. This is how you can use it against him, depending upon what kind of hardball you're going to play at the bargaining table. You can say, hey, you've said he's the best player. We all know he's the best player. Why not agree to a clause to ensure he's always going to be the highest paid player? Whoever the highest paid player is, whatever the climate is, he should be making a dollar more than that person. What's wrong with agreeing to that? Well, yeah, I, I have no problem with that. You know, I just think there's gonna probably have to be a certain time frame in the contract there, right? Where it's like, okay, maybe, you know, if we sign him to an eight-year deal, maybe deal, years one through five, Kansas City can protect themselves to be, okay, you're always going to be the highest paid quarterback in the NFL. I think once you get past that, though, you can't just say, oh, hey, yeah, five years from now, six years from now, Patrick Mahomes will still definitely be the best quarterback in football. There's good chance. We know that, certainly. Um, but but I, I, I would, uh, you know, I think you got to be a little careful there. And then to the other thing, Mike, I mean, yeah, I'm all about the players getting uh, maximizing what they can get. I mean, you only got one chance. You know, everybody else, their professions, they don't have a short shelf life like the NFL does. And when you're in the NFL, and I'm the perfect example, injury can strike. You know, I got a free eight. I got tendered. My year, I lost my spleen. I probably could have held out and asked for more money. We went to the we went to the playoffs the year before, but I went, ah, I'll be a team guy and come back and make everybody happy. Well, you know what that did? It screwed myself over. And, you know, that was stupid business on my part. And you got to protect yourselves in that fashion if you're an NFL football player today. And see, Mahomes has the luxury of the marketing money that he's now making like probably no one else in the league, and he'll continue to do that. That gives him some insurance against having something like that happen, and he likely has a gigantic insurance policy at this point. So he'll Mike, be Mike, fine one way or the other. Right. I was going to say, too, like the other thing, you know, I think you're on, on to something, but like you have to be the highest paid quarterback or maybe you have to be the top three uh, at your position, something like that. I mean, I, you know, hey, college coaches have that, right? You know, I know when I was at Texas, Mac Brown had a clause in his contract that he always had to be one of the top five highest paid coaches uh, in college football. You know, and I know I think Nick Saban and there's some other guys that have similar aspects of their contracts, too, to where they're never, you know, less than the market value for the top coach out there. So I, I do think that's an interesting angle you brought up. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.